Thank you, House Chair. Uh, the Democratic Alliance will not be supporting Order, the members. nomination of Ms. Busisiwi Mkribani as the new public protector today. Before I deal with the reasons why not, I'd like to thank the chairperson for running a relatively clean ship and uh, running a relatively efficient committee. I think she did quite a good job, so well done. I want to remind the honourable members of this House what the Constitutional Court has said about the Office of the Public Protector and what its function really is. In the Encanda judgment, the court unanimously stated that, like other Chapter 9 institutions, the Office of the Public Protector was created to strengthen constitutional democracy in the Republic. To achieve this crucial objective, it is required to be independent and subject only to the Constitution and the law. It is demanded of it to be impartial and to exercise the powers and functions vested in it without fear, favour and prejudice. The constitutional safeguards in Section 181 would be meaningless if institutions purportedly established to strengthen our constitutional democracy lacked even the remotest possibility to do so. The public protector is therefore one of the most invaluable constitutional gifts to our nation in the fight against corruption, unlawful enrichment, prejudice and impropriety in state affairs and for the betterment of good governance. For this reason, our constitution conceived of a way to give a voice, especially to the poor and marginalised, and teeth that would bite corruption and abuse effectively, and that is the public protector. Yesterday in the McBride matter, the constitutional court found that independence primarily means that the anti-corruption body should be shielded from undue political influence. To this end, genuine political will to fight corruption is the key prerequisite. Bearing in mind the direction provided by the highest court in our country, the DA cannot support the nomination of Ms. Nkubani for the following reasons. Her appointment would be unreasonable as she was by no means the best candidate for the position and was illogically preferred over other qualifying candidates. She has little or no practical experience to justify such an appointment when compared with the experience of the other candidates. She was employed by Home Affairs as a director immediately prior to this process being initiated. She changed employment in June 2016 and went to the State Security Agency as an analyst. When asked in the interview why she had changed jobs for what is ostensibly a demotion, ostensibly a demotion her reply with it was that she was passionate about the Constitution. Well, this is a noble value to hold, but it, doesn't make her, it alone does not make her eligible for the position or separate her from other more qualified candidates. And more worryingly, we have been advised that the time spent as an immigration officer in China is highly suspicious, having been informed that there is simply coded language for being on the payroll of the State Security Agency. In the absence of a logical explanation for what is seen as a demotion, the ineluctable conclusion is unfortunately that Ms. Nkubani is on the payroll of the State Security Agency. The situation is problematic, and in the current climate in the country where the justified view is held that President Jacob Zuma is abusing State Departments, the SSA in particular, to hang on to power at all costs, we hold the view that the public protector cannot be seen to have even, be even remotely connected to the State Security Agency. While this doesn't make Ms. Nkubani the worst candidate, it does not make her the best candidate either. Additionally, Madam Chairperson of the Order Committee, honourable members. she could not confirm that she had acquired any combination of experience for a cumulative period of at least 10 years as demanded by the Constitution. Other issues that gave rise to concern and move us to be unwilling to support her nomination are the following. Both Judge Wiener and Professor Madola were stronger candidates in terms of experience and in terms of the quali quality of the interviews. Professor Madola, as a candidate, brings the added bonus of his involvement in the Special Tribunal in Rwanda. He has had a certain distance from the government in South Africa, while Ms. Mkubani has stated on record that she wants to have a more friendly relationship with government. With the ever-present danger of state capture by the President, and the fact that all independent institutions with an investigative capacity have already been captured, leaving only the Office of the Public Protector and the ju Judiciary relatively untouched, it is of enormous importance to ensure that and secure that the appointment of the new Public Protector is beyond suspicion. We therefore view the single-minded support of Ms. Nkubani as unreasonable. The DA believes in the rule of law and stopping corruption. To this end, we have worked tirelessly during this process to appoint the new Public Protector, to ensure that the best person is appointed to serve the interests of the people. We should also remember that Ms. Madonsela was vilified by the ANC inside and outside of this House. To those supporting Ms. Makubani now, saying she must find her own moral compass, accused Ms. Madonsela of being arrogant, a law unto herself and a spy. 
Do not for one moment lose sight of the fact that the Honourable Sofa Morik, Deputy Minister of Defence, called Tudi Madonsela a CIA plant and accused her of undermining the ANC. We cannot Honourable risk Member, plant. your time has expired. We cannot risk these principles and we cannot support the nomination of Ms. Nkwebani. Order, Honourable Members. Order. <laughs> Honourable Shavambu.